Yeah. Today is Thursday. Our Justice Thursday conversation is seeking justice. <laughs> we, the people, are seeking justice. Dr. Patrick Mwinde is an economist and a financial expert. He's our friend. He's been on the show many times before. He's here for the first time in 2024. Good morning, Dr. Harry. Good morning, Eric. Happy New Year, Buana. Happy New Year. Hey, no, 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 Ikipanda na ikishuka. <laughs> Ikipanda na ikishuka. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. We want to talk about the things that we are seeing currently happening in the, in the economy. So, a uh, government <coughs> created a bond, mm. new euro bond, uh, attracted very many bids, proper bids, high interest, but it's okay. I mean, it didn't struggle. Within a short time, oversubscribed, took the money, went to the local market, infrastructure bond, within a short time, Looking for 70B, you get 280B offer. I mean, it's good times. I mean, who says we have a problem? Look, everybody's confident and comfortable with us. Uh, the dollar was operating, behaving like this, like this, like this. Suddenly, the shilling is now behaving like this, like this, like that. Mm -hmm. The shilling is barking now. It's no, woof, woof. <laughs> woof, <laughs> so woof. Right. Okay. <laughs> no, no, our shilling is actually the lion. The two lions on our coat of arms are roaring. We want to understand exactly what's happening. Tufanya nini sasa? Tungoja mambo yende vipi. Let me welcome you with the day's proverb. The proverbs this week are from Angola. And today's proverb, you cannot do without water, even if it drowned your child. You cannot do without water, even if it drowned your child. Ah, interesting one. Mm -hmm. um, but probably my quick take is that um, there are certain basic things that um, um, sustain life, mm -hmm. no matter what. Um, the fact that water sometimes kills does not mean that the body does not need water. So it means that at any point in time, the body will need water. Mm. Um, it's the same thing of what you're talking about. The fact that times are hard, we still need money because yeah. money holds the economy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think there are those things that are basic, uh, regardless of their, their consequences. Mm. Sometimes the unfortunate event, it's like when you're using a road, the people get an accident, but you still use the same vehicle. Mm. Mm. Uh, to rescue them We're still using and <laughs> to evacuate yeah. them yeah. Yep. <laughs> you use the same vehicle you use the same instruments but sometimes those bad things happen it's but true. that's mean that we don't continue indeed life has to continue indeed yes so let me set the scene and um, as i set the scene now here <coughs> i'll start with a statement by the cabinet secretary for the national treasury earlier this week on the successful pricing of a 1.5 billion dollar euro bond strengthening debt management strategy for the country he said the government is pleased to announce the successful pricing of a new 9.75 percent 1.5 billion dollar euro bond due in 2031 it'll uh, amortize in three equal installments 2029 2030 and 2031 resulting in a weighted average life of six years the 2031 euro bonds have an issue price of 97.27%, yielding 10.375%. Kenya received strong demand with a high-quality order book exceeding $6 billion. We were there for $1.5. $6 billion order book, allowing the tighter pricing and an increased issuance compared to initial guidance. The process from the 2031 euro bond will fund the offer to buy Kenya's existing two billion dollar dollar euro bond that's due later this year pending demand in the tender offer results are expected today february 15th 2024. so he says this basically shows that uh, we are doing well the international capital markets are providing essential liquidity for the government and the successful transaction underscores investor confidence in kenya the government appreciates the strong partnership with investors committing to sound debt management proactive managing debt is a key pillar of president ruto's administration and this transaction represents a significant step towards achieving that goal okay that is number one number two from the central bank of kenya yesterday signed by the director of financial markets david lusa the central bank had gone to the market the domestic market with an infrastructure bond 
um, 8.5 years treasury bond and uh, the total amount offered was 70 b the total amount uh, received in terms of bids 288 billion we decided to take 240 billion you know because yeah. um, I mean, <laughs> why take the whole 280 you can just refuse i mean you know we're going for 70 we took 280 at what interest rate at 18.6 percent <laughs> not so bad not 20 18.6 percent this also from uh, commentaries that we've seen is signaling something that's happening in terms of confidence of the market in okay you guys want how much 70 here 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 people say here 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 it goes times four to 80 comes you mm -hmm. now therefore decide to check 240 <laughs> it's not a bad thing <laughs> in the same period the shilling which was uko pama simba menyeshewa it's just been raining el nino left right and center the shilling has lost significantly over the last one year suddenly in a span of a few days the shilling gains heavily against the dollar and yesterday alone ndu was surprised it's like yesterday was ndu was just sitting there uh, doing calls ningapi <laughs> sai <laughs> ni 160 ningapi sai ni 155 ningapi sai ni 154 ningapi sai ni 153 ai ningapi sai ni 150 yeah. <laughs> what did it close at yesterday the shilling it was around 150 yeah. i think some went up to around 150 mm -hmm. the market have just opened so probably today we might go below 150 Where? by the close of the markets by the close of the market yeah i think they have just opened okay okay what sorcery is this um i think um this has been a very interesting week mm. um in many ways mm. uh, number one um when the government went to the international market i think there was no mention of we are borrowing unless i missed some information mm. I think the information that came out is that we were um, offering to buy back. Okay, the the bond that was embedded, I think, was a bit silent a deal. It was announced, so so I think that was unless I missed some information. Mm. So so I think that what came out was that we were buying back uh, part of the. Um, it's the same thing I remember actually. Even the president speaking, uh, when was he? Um, he was in France. Mm. And he said, yeah, yeah, we're going back into the market in maybe February or March, and we will be seeking to buy back um, the $2 billion euro bond, part of that. What does buy back mean? Uh, buy back means that you um, offer to recall uh, the instrument. We call them instruments that we issued. For example, when I, I give you a bond, mm. I tell you um, this is $1,000 voucher so i'll give you back the thousand dollar on maturity which was supposed to be june uh, 2024 yeah um then in between i'll be paying you interest mm. so buy back means that i recall the principal before the maturity date and then i pay the outstanding interest in that case so i reduce the um value of the voucher the total the two billion so that was what was an offer Mm -mm. Which is I don't sorry, get it. Sorry, Patrick. I don't get okay. it. So you give me a note of, let's say, a billion. Yes. Yeah, let's just use these particular ones: two billion shillings, two thousand and fourteen. Okay. Yes. Went to the market. June this year, we were supposed to pay back the two billion shillings to the people who we had borrowed from, which is Nduoko and Patrick Muinde. Yes. So Eric comes back. He's supposed to pay back two two billion, but in the meantime he has been paying an interest on it yes right yes yes so i've been paying the interest to you too yes so what does buyback mean i'm so i owe you two billion shillings the principal amount that you've given me I, i'm simply recalling the the principal amount mm. before the due date so the due date was supposed to be june 24. Mm -hmm. so i'm only recalling that um maybe about eight months earlier mm -hmm. you who owes it yes the government is the one that yes. is recalling it uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. so what I'm saying is that give me um, that voucher that I gave you. Okay, I'll give that you that. I was supposed billion. to pay you in June 24. Yeah, you give it to me back today. Okay, so I pay you back the voucher value mm. and then the interest that is outstanding. So it means that you reduce the 
maturity so the, so the interest from from for the next eight months i will not pay yeah then i try to save on the interest okay. for the remaining months okay. so it's a question of uh, trying to manage um it's just like when you repay a it's loan early earlier. repayment of a loan uh, of a loan yes okay. so that was the payback was okay but i think that was was um mentioned so the the 1.5 billion didn't come out in that discussion so i think that's what i'm saying it was a bit of a surprise when it came and when you check most of the analytical and expert opinions nobody expected that will be borrowing within this time mm. so many people expected to be back to the international market maybe in this by the end of that second or that quarter mm. so many people expect to be in the market around july maybe august or september okay and that's something it was a bit of a surprise when it was announced that you've already issued a successful bond okay um <clears throat> i think for many people when the um recall was announced they thought the infrastructure bond was probably what would be used uh to pay part of that bond oh so, I, so I think um it was a bit silent whether we were in the international market okay yes. so now now that we've gone to the international markets taken the 1.5 billion dollars yes and the prof here commits that this 1.5 billion dollars will be used to repay the 2 billion yes what happens to the 0.5 billion what you've done is to exchange what you're doing is to exchange a loan with another loan mm. so so it was a 10 year loan it was due in june so we have exchanged that with another 7 year loan so in a way we have recreated new interest repayment um so so now it means that the 2 billion we will pay part of it now and then we'll have a new instrument so technically in terms of the principal we still have a, a loan to repay so why would you do that because what the loan is due you need to pay it somehow and there's somebody who's willing to lend you the money is that why you would do is that why you would make such a decision peter john mm, yeah um peter paul that's something to a bit of an interesting uh, uh decision mm. because all the indications were that we have enough probably quantity of dollars to manage the 2 billion okay so all the indicators were good uh the international institution Bretton Woods Institute, which is the world bank the imf they had given a good cushion a good buffer we have seen tourism was recovering so there were probably good dollar inflow in this quarter um the kenyan domestic market was starting to perform the interest have been quite attractive meaning that foreign investors will now be interested in the kenyan um Bond. bills mm. domestic bills mm. which means that they will be able to bring dollars to buy the domestic bills yeah. so so the expectations was that the market is fairly liquid in terms of dollars to manage the um 2 two billion, billion bullet that was supposed to be in june mm. so why it uh, was exchanged with a new bond uh is not clear um technically what that means is that um remember we had announced we are going to pay back in december okay. yeah. voluntarily mm -hmm. yeah nobody prompted us to do that yeah. so when we missed that payment uh you create like an anxiety in the market okay mm. but still um between january and hardly this month what has been happening is that we really were in good space in terms of dollars mm. and dollar flows so why we have decided to exchange it um to me it's more of um you postpone a crisis Why? It's just like um I throw you a tianga scanster you are lucky to hold it and then you throw it yeah so it be the side or or back <laughs> so so that does not necessarily solve the problem um I, i've seen some other indicators that um the month that now we have put this interest mm. which is the month of um february probably and august mm. is around the same time when we repaint the sgr loans which are also very heavy yeah. dollar demands mm. so i think that the the, the sgr are paid in july so you're putting a lot of pressure on the month of probably july and august yeah But the other thing that we need to understand is that the offer rate is very attractive. To whom? Coupon 9.75% to the dollar. That's a very high interest in global standards. So even the people who um are risk averse, yeah, that would be very attractive. So so what happens is like we look at the euro bond that we are exchanging. If I remember well, it should have been borrowed at 6.45 or thereabout. Mm. We have exchanged it with 9.75 coupon. Yeah. 
So that's um, you're taking, you're exchanging a cheaper loan with, with a more expensive, expensive loan, with a shorter tenure, with a shorter tenure. Um, so, so if we do not get the revenue side correct, we might be creating a, a serious problem in the future. But, but Patrick, really, why why would you do that? If it, I mean, as we as we talk about it now, it's very clear. You have a loan. There's obligations on it. You decide we're going to pay it early. You swap it out for a more expensive one that's due in the shorter term. It just already doesn't make sense. Why Why would you, as a nation, make a decision to do that? Why would you? That's what I'm saying. We are interested in circumstances. Sometimes probably what we, the public has been told about the real um, economy is mm. not probably what is the reality. Mm. Remember, in many times when I appeared in this show, you can never cheat the economy. The actual economy, you can never cheat it. Okay? Mm. So, so um, there's nothing wrong with taking a strategic decision to exchange a loan facility. Mm. Normally, that happens in, in any economy or in any company or in any business. The question that we should be asking, and this is the question that should be troubling us, mm. is that when we took this loan in 2014, mm. the law expects that we use that money in development and the reason why you took that loan was because the development should have cost sufficient revenues to the government mm. to be able to comfortably manage the interest mm. and the principal repayment so if the money went to the right things then we expect we should be generating enough revenues in the economy to be able to comfortably repay not to exchange the loan with another one now, the question that we're asking is, why are, the, are we then borrowing to repay? Why are we exchanging that? It means mm. probably this loan does not trigger the impact that we expected in the economy. So, for example, if I take a loan today and I put it in a business, the expectation is that the business will be able to improve, mm -hmm. raise enough revenues to repay the loan. If it didn't do that, then probably I resort into another borrowing to repay what is maturing. Now, in technical finance language, economic language, yeah. exchanging loan facilities with another one probably are indicators of financial distress. Mm. So those are some of the indicators of financial distress. It's like when you go to a bank, you take a loan, or you start with your uh, circle, you take a loan. Uh, by the time you are done with that loan, you realize you're not able to repay it. You go to the bank, you take a more expensive loan to repay the circle loan. Mm. And then uh, once that happens, now the loans move from the circle to the uh, bank. bank. Yep. Then as the maturity comes, you realize you're not able to repay. You go to a Sherlock. <laughs> you get it at a, more expensive. Um, which is more expensive. Yeah. So if you look at how, how these our debt instruments have been going, mm. that's exactly what has been happening. You don't bond one, you don't bond two, you don't bond three. Every single time we're exchanging the euro bonds, we exchange them with not cheaper, but more expensive. But more expensive. And that I was giving the example of the 2014 euro bond. Mm. It was about 6.45. We have exchanged it with 9.75. Okay? Is it because the, the cheaper loans don't exist? No. Okay. So no, that, the, that, the, that's, a, that's uh -huh. a, put it aside. And it's because in order to pay this, borrowing has to happen right yes there's no other way to pay this it has we you have, have no to, other source there's of no money other to source of money to pay these loans that is the implication now no 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 it's not the implication it's, it's the thing <laughs> yes it's, <laughs> it's what is up you don't have any and yes the thing is do you, you have to get money to pay it and the only other all way indications to pay are the only other source was borrowing is mm. borrowing yes right? yes so now if you know that that's the only option that you have why go for a more expensive option no, you or do we not know of the cheaper was option? The, was that the only or is that the available only available option? option at the time? Now, um, you see, when you go to the market, you are not the one who dictates the pricing. Mm. The pricing is dictated by the people on the money, mm. based on how they assess your risk. Sure. So, so it is now a question of so risk that, pricing. So they assess your risk and also your desperation, isn't it? Yeah, because do you have to take it? They can assess your risk as much as they like. They can assess until night time. That's fine. They can but also do you see have, your They can also see you're desperate. So which trumps the other? Is it desperation at that point because time is ticking away? Or because you need to then at least be on the right side of rain as concerns fiscal responsibility? Because what then 
fuels the decision to I mean, look, you're already in trouble. Yes. You're already late. You already have responsibility <laughs> past your ears. Why would you take the decision to enter into a much more expensive commitment? I no. don't I don't understand. Yes. I'm really trying to understand. No, the two actors mm. um probably are standing on different positions. Okay. Okay. Now for the investor the owner of the money, they assess your risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they're giving you more high risk is because probably they consider you to be more credit risk. Mm -hmm. Now, you accept it because it's normally their bids and offers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You accept it now. It's the question of where now it uh, becomes like a desperation on your part. Mm -hmm. You're accepting it because now you probably do not have any option. Okay. For the person in the market, the person is giving the credit them they have considered you are high risk mm -hmm. now just the same week um ivory cost mm -hmm. issued their loan at 7.6 something mm -hmm. in the same market and they also got over subscription why did they get a probably better rate mm. the assessment in the market will mean that they consider ivory cost to be a low risk compared to the Kenyan one. Mm. So you taking the more expensive risk is uh, sorry um, facilities or overs is probably because now you you are desperate. You need the money. Mm. The guys who are giving you the money, them they are assessing you based on your credit risk. So for them, uh, they consider has to be more credit risk, and and that's the pricing of uh, the international market. It's the same case uh, with the domestic market. Okay, look so at true, to, true. Then the thing is true. I mean, I, and I look. It, we, we can say it as it is, which is all right, because look, there's no, the, the basement doesn't have a bottom floor, right? Because that's where you are at this point. Yes. You take it because that's all that's available and the commitment is knocking at your door. In fact, it's inside, it's having, it's having a drink on the sofa. It's yes. right there <laughs> and you're going to have to deal with it. Yes. So you take that option because that is what is available and you are desperate. Is that not the case? It's not as though you're flirting with different options and saying, oh, well, you know, here's another option. How about I take this? No, because it doesn't make sense to me that you take more expensive one if there are other options for you. Yes, that means that, uh, you see, it means there's nobody who's giving you money at a cheaper rate. Because if you come now to the domestic, because the same thing is the same, the rule book that is playing the domestic market. Mm. Treasury bills now are doing 16 point um to um up to 16.6 mm. mm. now the bond that was offered the infrastructure bond is at 18.5 uh, those are very attractive interest rate partly the central bank i guess were trying to use a market intervention to establish the dollar because what was happening is that people were moving their uh investment mm. and savings in the country mm -hmm. from the local currency Purchasing the dollar. dollars, the dollar. but it's going to snowball, is it not, Patrick? Because you're going yeah. to get so. What's the term of this thing now? This bond, what's the term? It's seven years, seven years, okay. Yes, so in seven years, right? Over seven years, as interest con it becomes due and it's payable, etc., etc., uh, there's a possibility where what has happened yesterday, right? Yes, is going to occur again. That you're still going to go back to people and say, you know what, let me withdraw that note. I give mm -hmm. you some of it and then we can go find some other money to reborrow. Because essentially what you're doing is that you are paying a little bit back before it's due mm -hmm. and then you're reborrowing so that your commitment then uh, goes for a little bit longer in terms of time, isn't it? Yes. So the possibility of then being able to pay at this 18% is very low, is it not? Yes. Now, um, so it's just going to keep snowballing and snowballing unless some kind of major intervention takes place now. Yes, you, you see, that's what uh, what we've gotten now this week is what we call temporary reprieve. Yeah, it's temporary. Mm. Now, it will depend with what we do now. Uh, delaying the pressure and the repayment can work if you fix the economy. Mm -hmm. So, so what we have done is to buy a lead time mm -hmm. in between, and this lead time is not big; it's not long. It's a very short window. It's a short window of probably three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. So, what that means is that we need to get the policies correct right now, now, if we are going to solve this problem. Now, debt has only two options: one, you repay it, mm -hmm. or you grow your income base. So, if my revenue base becomes more the burden is lighter. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, I take a loan and I'm repaying, say, 100000 and my income was one fifty, 
yeah. but I grow my income to 200,000. Mm -hmm. So the 100,000 that I'm repaying becomes lighter yeah. mm. in context of my debt burden. Sure. So that's what I'm saying. If we do not fix the economy now, this is a very short-lived reprieve. Now, what we have done is mm. we have put pressure on the interest component, which has been the huge consumer of our revenues. Mm. Right now, as we speak and as we stand here, interest repayment is the single largest expenditure of government right now. Mm. This year, we are projecting probably $750 billion is going to interest, Just interest. alone. Interest alone. Whoa. Interest alone. So what we have done is the interest that we are taking right now, because all the loans that we are taking, whether they are domestic or whether they are external, mm. the interest has increased. Mm. So probably next year or the year about, we'll be doing 850 billion. Wow. So what I'm saying is, yeah. if we are to solve this problem, and that's what I was calling a temporary reprie uh, reprieve, mm. it means that we need to do something drastic and definitive to fix our revenue base. That's if we do not address the revenue base, we shall. then we are in a serious problem. And that's what I'm asking. What are we doing with the money that we're borrowing? Uh, we are repaying the debt. <laughs> haven't you gotten that so far? That money no. is not <laughs> coming to build anything new. No. Patrick, you that money you is coming <laughs> to go there. The, uh, it is the coming. original money that Which, you borrowed. Uh, that, you're, that how is all you're paying on top of paying on top of... <laughs> Seven that, years, that 2014, was, 10 In this years. new window that you've created, mm -hmm. you've created a wee new window by getting some $2 billion from the market. For what? In just three days. For what? Okay. To do it. To repay the debt. <laughs> yes. So you don't have any wiggle room even to do this thing that you're saying, let's do something with our economy so that we can grow the economy to grow the revenues. So when you grow the revenues, the <laughs> pressure on the outflows reduces. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, um, the information that we had from the National Treasury earlier in the year, when the National Treasury spoke about why it missed that um, voluntary early payment of uh, the Eurobond, was that actually our advisors have told us to wait, market is not favorable. What we're going to do is look at the favorable time, go into the market, get some money and uh, do a buyback. When the president spoke, it was, it was in France, wasn't it? Just recently, and we quoted him here. And he said on the sidelines, actually, yes, we are going back to the market. We want to buy back this uh, euro bond. So February, March, we shall be in the market. So all indications were that the, now the advisors had said, maybe the window is opening and it would be a favorable time. If you look at what has happened with Ivory Coast and uh, who's the other country? Mozambique. Uh, no, no, the one, the one that went Benin. Benin. They went to the market recently. If you look at what has happened, uh, conditions are favorable. You can go. Indications were we were going to the market to do the buyback. Yes. So no indication on floating a new euro bond. Yes. Okay, and then we went and floated a new euro bond, and the result came in immediately that this is what we went. We went, we were looking for this. We got bids worth six billion. We took 1.5. We're good now. Smooth sailing from this point on. But what's a pros pros the process of actually issuing a euro bond? Previously, we've seen prospectors issued. He announced that we're coming to for a euro bond. And all this, I remember the 2004, 2014 euro bond, there was all manner of fanfare. Yes. And that's why I said this was a bit of an interesting and a surprise. Mm. Because what we knew was the buyback. Uh, I think most of us have learned about the new float when it was announced. Um, for, for borrowing and going to capital markets, typically, uh, a borrower will issue prospectors say what they are looking for, what probably are the modalities, the lingo frameworks and all that. But in this case, um, I've, I've yet to see the prospectors. Um, so, so probably you cannot tell exactly um, what were the terms and the conditions because that's the, they are normally specified and defined in the prospectors. Now, this um, doing that without um, uh, probably a, pub a publicly available prospectors is not unique because in Eurobond 2, uh, the same thing happened. Uh, we were in the market and then the prospectors was coming much late. Mm.
So that's why I said it was a bit of a surprise because without the prospectus, it's very hard to know exactly what has been offered, what has been committed. Where is this prospector? It's supposed to be a public document for investors. Where? Okay? It's supposed to be published. Yeah, but where? In the ga Gazette? What? Whether it's in the Gazette or in the website, Treasury it should website be, or something. Mm -hmm. even on media, mm -hmm. it's a document that is supposed to be publicly available. So it can even be like in the newspaper, Yes. and this is what, you know, uh, the Treasury says one, two, three has happened, and in this manner. Yes, it's okay. just like if you're buying the domestic yes. uh, instruments, yeah. if you're mm -hmm. buying, buying the domestic bills, yeah. there's central bank issues, how much they are put on over, okay. what, um, how the interest will be determined, mm -hmm. What they are going to accept, the modality it's open. It's normally very public. Yeah, and and in what time period? I'm go, I'm going somewhere with before, this. Before, before, before this before action you, that we've seen happens. You see, by the time I put the money there, I yes. should know what what is expected. Okay. So like now the infrastructure bond. Yes. It was put um, the week they were opening. Yes. And that was uh, the last week of um, January. Mm -hmm. They said we are looking for seventy billion. Mm -hmm. They said we are going to buy it in this number of lots. They say the interest will be market de mm -hmm. determined based mm -hmm. on the bids they have received. Mm -hmm. So that is the exact scenario when you're going to the international market. So why, what reason would I have then for not making a prospectus public? Uh, that's why it's interesting for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I've asked, unless we've seen the prospectus, mm -hmm. because I've said I've not seen it, I've been able to go I've been able to try to search for it. And, and I said when we were in the market, we were told probably we were doing a buyback not issuing a new instrument now the question that comes in was it an opportunistic move because you've just seen the market seems to be right because of Cote d'Ivoire and Benin mm -hmm. but even in that case you still need to make a public document for mm -hmm. investors to know mm -hmm. um, sometimes that's why you see some people questioning really who are these people and buying the instruments okay because the question is mm -hmm. imagine a guy in the US mm -hmm knows nothing much about Kenya. No prospector that is publicly available and is willing to put money here. You see? So so it, it raises some questions on who really is Can it be, the money that you borrow. Could it be that the, the, the ones who have lent us this time are the ones who have lent us six times before? So, I mean, they know they have been in the market. They have interacted with us before. They have lent us before. They have seen our repayments for the interest have not been bad. So they're like, all right, so oh, this guy is back in the market. Or the prospectors will come. It's okay. I already Give know you. this guy. So let, let me put my, my bid Six billion dollar worth of bids. It's not a small it's a lot amount. of money. Mm. It's a lot of money. Um, normally in the international market, there are people who are, the money is there. Mm. So, so what, let's when um, when you talk about the financial market, it's normally a very big market. So the billions, actually trillions of dollars, moving every single day. So the question of whether the money is there, it's not in doubt. Mm. So the money is available. The only thing that investors look for is where they put their money. Okay, where mm. they put the money uh, now is based on now the risk they determine, All right. who they are lending. Right. So that's what I'm saying for a normal investor will be looking for the debt instrument, which is mm. the prospectus. Mm. It is possible, probably there are lenders who know us, who have given us money. Mm. Or probably even some of them are the ones who held the two um, billion mm. coupons mm. or uh, bonds. But even that, it doesn't um, give you leeway to go to the market without telling the citizens. Remember, this is a public debt. Public debt is borrowed for and on behalf of the Kenyan people. Mm. So even if we, I don't have the ability to buy that bond, I should know what the government is going For the purposes of knowledge. That's yes. what we are saying. For mm. knowledge's sake. But not also for knowledge's sake. Uh, it is the constitutional law. requirement. According to the law, you Article should. Article 201, sabbatical 1 on principles of public financial management. Mm. So this information must be publicly available. So citizens must know what we are committing to and why we are committing to that. So just take a stab, Patrick. Yes. Why would I not want to make this information public? Um, I said before this, no expert, even IMF, were expecting us to be on the debt market, on the euro bond. You look at the, for, again, the, the latest communication in yes, January, yeah. even early February. Everybody was expecting we'll be in the um, bond market probably from the third quarter mm -hmm. because all the indications were there's enough buffers mm -hmm. yeah. towards dollar to repay the 
but um, probably I said there could be um, been a motive to use the market to stabilize the the exchange rate mm-hmm. because what is happening is that um, with the high interest rates people are willing to exchange their dollar denominated savings with the Kenyan savings yeah so you are easing the pressure on the dollar okay mm-hmm. whether that was the motive or probably we will still know okay because um the, the 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 supply of dollars right now this week is quite high because of the bond mm. the infrastructure bond mm. and now what we are getting from the tourism mm. so that probably is easing the pressure on the exchange rate so so it's not clear whether they were trying to use the market to manage the dollar as an intervention as an intervention for forex. because um the, the 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 analogy that we could let our forex be determined in the market is not correct for us mm. very few countries have what we call free float where you allow your exchange rate to be determined in the market we do not have that capacity because our export import balance is very skewed towards import yeah so it is very <coughs> likely that the kenyan government can <coughs> achieve a market determined forex rate so probably this might have been a change in policy at central bank mm. to intervene in the dollar market Last now, week, yes, the governor of the central bank <coughs> spoke about the progress made so far in stabilizing this. And remember, he said that um, initially, when they were letting loose and saying, "Let's fi- let the shilling and the dollar find their equilibrium and their p- position in the market," he came back and said, "We have noticed that it's gone beyond what should reasonably be its position in the market." and probably we need to come up with new interventions so maybe he act- already signaled that they were going to do something yes probably this could be it's part of the interventions okay but but that's what i'm saying our case is what we normally call managed float mm. we are not really a free float uh forex market so even when we keep on complaining the former governor was you know probing Ooh. the market yeah that's exactly what our market is it is we manage so ours is managed float mm. now what we are asking and what we are saying is that when we have taken this Steep, highly costly borrowings to intervene in the market. What are we doing now to uh, protect ourselves in the three years down the line when you'll be required to repay? Mm. And that's where I have a lot of problems. And that's why we kept on asking: Why is it becoming that every loan facility that we use, we have to exchange it with another one? Mm. It means that. The money that you're borrowing is not having the right impact, impact. Mm-hmm. on the revenue side of the government. Mm. Mm. And we will look at the expenditure side because we're only talking about the revenue side. We must start speaking to the expenditure side of the government. Mm. If you look at the last one year, um, what we've done, uh, the money that went to development, and development is the expenditure that is supposed to be probing the economy to generate more revenue, mm. uh, the national government only spent about 17%. The counties spend only 24%. The constitution demands that you spend at least 30% of your expenditure on development. On development. That is the minimum yeah. constitutional requirement. Now, even if we were to argue for argument's sake, uh, in the last 10 years of Jubilee, they were talking about the big push infrastructure projects. They kept on saying they'll make return mm. in the future. Mm. Now, that return has not come. Because they didn't and complete it, the project. And it's partly because why this money was borrowed. Hmm. So that return is not anywhere. Now, in the last one year or one 18 months, what infrastructure projects have we done? Even if we say the others were not... We haven't really launched. Done, we have not done any hmm. tangible infrastructure. infrastructure. We haven't launched any. We haven't completed any. Any. So, so that means that all this that we're doing now is we're managing, exchanging debt with debt without putting money in the economy. That's exactly what is happening. And it also means partly what is borrowed is also going to to current, current expenditure. Which is normally will be like we might borrow like uh, um, development but we use it for recurrent. So what that means is that we are consuming what you borrowed. It's just like um, you take a loan and you go to holiday in Seychelles yeah. and come back. What start, happens? Start repaying the loan. <laughs> start repaying the loan. After three nights, four, four yes. days, three nights. So, so, so I think what we need... After the honeymoon... <coughs> yes. 
the reality of the yeah. dead scenes. Okay, so here we are. And, you know, look, a lot of times when we're asking is that folks are wondering exactly what's going on. It seems as though there is this elite club of economists and financial knowers, or seers, who are the ones who understand exactly what's going on. Because for the longest time, you know, not not even for the longest time, maybe for, the, for a year, the dollar and the shilling have been doing this dance, right? Yes. And so last week we were at 166 shillings yes. to the dollar. Last week, today's Thursday. Yes. Right? And everybody was giving the excuse for why things have become so expensive. People who run shops, people who do things, they said, oh, you know, the dollar is so high. Yeah. Difficult for us to even. People who sell vegetables, oh, you know, the dollar. So there's a minimal understanding, <laughs> right, of what happened. But we know that the shilling takes a hit because of the scarcity of. The dollar. The dollar. Yes. Mm. So that's why you say to find this dollar is hard. To get it in your hands is hard. Yes. So obviously the price is going to go up. up. Yes. That's why to buy it is so expensive because it, there's not so much of it. So then suddenly, yesterday, the government is selling something. Yes. And the return on your investment for that thing that you will the government is selling is very high. Yes. Isn't it? Eighteen percent. My God, you won't get it anywhere. Yes. So suddenly everybody is releasing this money because they want to buy this thing because they attract, the, the rate is so attractive. So what happens? We now release these dollars that we, whether, wherever they've been held. Yes. We yes, don't know. Yes. But suddenly they've been released, right? Yes. And then it's available. And so what happens when there's so much cabbage in the market? The price of cabbage comes down. Comes down. Yes. Am I right to say that is exactly what has happened with the shilling in one day, two days, three yes. days? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That in this week, mm -hmm. there will be a lot of dollar inflows. Mm -hmm. One coming for the infrastructure bond, because mm -hmm. also it uh, seems to attract a lot of international or even the diaspora. Right. And also what you've got from the euro bond. So everybody's putting their money into the country. <coughs> yes, and now. IMF, yes. World Bank, they have also pumped a bit of money. dollars. Okay, yes. dollars have come in. So now the yes. shilling. So the question is, has the shilling gained strength or has a temporary situation been um, it, um, activated yes. to allow it look as though it has? Because if it actually has, then wouldn't we start to see in the economy that things then begin to change? Or let me ask it this way. Shouldn't we then see that thereafter things will look a bit different? We've been told the reason why things are so tight, price of dollar. This, this is it, price of the dollar. This, this is it, price of the dollar. But now we've seen that. Is this temporary? Because if it is not, then we should start to see in the economy things looking different. Yes. Now, um, remember the statement I used. I say this is, at the moment, mm. it's a temporary mm. reprieve. Now, whether it's sustainable depends with what we do next mm -hmm. at policy level. Mm. Now, one of the things that has been troubling our market, um, in, in, the, in the financial markets, we talk about sentiments. Mm -hmm. Sentiments is the signals that you're sending to the market. Now, investors and people who are in the economy act on those sentiments. Mm -hmm. So for, for us, mm. in, in analysis, when statements are given to the public, for example, when the CS Treasury speaks, mm. yeah. or when the president speaks, mm -hmm. in our language, the technical language, we presume these are insiders. Mm -hmm. So they are presumed to have knowledge or privileged information. Yes. Now, financial markets work with information. So whoever has the right information, for example, if I knew there was this dollar bond coming, mm. if I was privy to that and I had the money, I'll have lined my money in advance. Mm. Though I was saying it was a bit of a shock, mm -hmm. we we're borrowing it. Because it means that the people who have been able to buy that bond New. are the ones who rich. had privileged information. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. The person who didn't have the information didn't have a window to go to the market. Right. Yeah. The infrastructure bond was out for almost three weeks. Three weeks. So, so whoever needed to buy it, yeah. they had the information that it was on offer. Yeah. And they were able to put their money. Yeah. So, so that, that means that probably there will be a bit of insider trading. We call it insider trading. Mm -hmm. And insider trading goes to the people who have the information. Okay. Okay? Then that also means that these insiders could have colluded to, dis to determine how much they want to lend at. That this 9.75% is not necessarily market. It is cartel-driven. 
Uh, we might not say that. <laughs> because, I mean, look, if only a few... Because we're at the international market. You've come to the international market. Yes. In a few hours, you've received this uh, bids worth six billion. And you've come out of it with at, at an interest of 9.75%. Why 9.75? Uh, it's bids. So, so I tell you, I'm going to give you like um, 100 million. Right. Mm. And me, I'm giving you my money at 10%. At X amount. Yes, X amount. So the people who had insider information knew that this thing was coming and they were prepared to... In the absence of a prospectus, yes. it would appear. And that is it. In the absence of a prospectus, mm -hmm. it would appear there probably there are people who had the information. And that is it. If I was, for example, an honest Kenyan out here, I did know we were buying by the dollars. Maybe I had my hundred thousand dollars I could have put in the market. Put in the this market. One. But I didn't know. Because the information was not publicly available. Mm -hmm. Now I say the infrastructure bond, we knew about it. So if I had cash somewhere, I would be able to liquidate things here and there in readiness in three, yes. for this one. But this one we didn't know. So so that I'm saying it opens windows for speculation. <laughs> when you're in the national market, you might not say exactly to the worker term driven, but it opens speculation. Yeah. So we can only speculate really who are these investors. Mm. So so that is genuine speculation that we can do. But what I'm saying is that um the temporary reprieve that we have got is not sustainable. And that's what I'm saying, we must respond with the right policy interventions. One, to grow our revenues. Two, to open the economy mm. to generate more. Mm. That is the only way you can deal with debts. Postponing mm. debt is not solving a debt crisis. Um, if we need to look at them, uh, for the last two years, no African market had been there. Mm. So I said Cote d'Ivoire and Benin were the first one to go. And that I, I kept on asking, was it an um, opportunistic moment that we saw? And jumped on it. And just jumped into it. Because we were not really there to issue a bond. We were there to buy back. But here it has happened. And that's what I said most of the analysts. And check all the publications that have been done January, February. Nobody was expecting Kenya to be in the international market for the bond. Now, it is not true that we are not able to solve our issues. Mm. If we go back to our expenditures, the government is still living extremely large. Yeah. Um, the budget is mm. still largely going to consumption. Yeah. And at policy level, we have not seen a decisive move to counter that. And that I said, you either cut your spending mm. and put your money in the right places, or you simply postpone the crisis. Mm. What has happened in these two weeks, because what you've raised now is um, the euro bond is about two, two, 25 billion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we have taken the infrastructure at two, 241. Bi uh, we took 241 billion. That's what we have accepted. Mm. That alone is how much money? Close to 500 billion that has yeah. been taken. Mm. It's 445 billion, uh, 446 that has been taken in two, within two weeks. Yeah. Yes. Uh, our debt had already crossed 11, 11, 11 trillion. trillion. Okay, so packed with the GDP, where are we? We are yeah. doing badly. <laughs> to answer to what you've asked, huh? the cabinet met yesterday. Yes. And the cabinet decided that uh, consolidation is important for the financial year 24 25 and the medium term budget, which aims to support the bottom up economic agenda through a growth friendly fiscal consolidation. This consolidation will be supported by enhanced revenue mobilization there and austerity measures underpinned by the rationalization of non priority expenditure. Oh, stop cutting it. back on expenditure. <laughs> so, you the thing you're asking, uh, ah, you which, which you're, government, eh? no. which government, Eric. Policy level, uh, you see, the top policy making and decision did making. Did I hear something uh, like uh, non priority spending? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm just which, checking. Which is what he's saying. <laughs> Cut back on excessive fat on spending. The Close real it. economy, eh. um, it's not in the junk on. Mm. So when we it's in, the we are in economics, the real economics is felt on the com streets and well, on the community. Well, well, to lia, to lia ni, to lia ni, ni ni vijana wado, to lia ni, mutaona. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Situation Room today. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.